distracted. So for the community segment this week, we have three really awesome people to talk about their latest projects. I'm actually going to start on my left. We're going to talk to Ni. Nee. Now, Ni nee has a pretty amazing story about um, downtown community, Vegas tech, as well as the downtown podcast. So when did you sort of first start finding out about our community? Well, I basically found this place on a whim through the internet. Um, I was vacationing with my family last summer, and I just found a downtown podcast, thought I'd come down and check it out. And I checked it out, met some really great people, um, where they introduced me to the whole like Vegas tech scene. I didn't even know this place existed when I was before I came here. I, I'm pretty much the same when I moved down here. I had no idea. I came here for other reasons, and then the community was what sucked me in and made me stay here. Exactly, exactly, yeah. They're, they're working on like crazy, really cool stuff down here that I want to be part of. I just want to be in the scene. So how did you end up going from coming to the podcast and finding out about Vegas Tech to actually wanting to move here and move your business here? Sure, yeah. So the first time I came down was, um, was during the podcast. Then I met some really cool people, and then I came back to Salt Lake City um, that's basically when I launched Step Point Labs with um, one of my co-founders, Tyler, here. And we, we ran into Jackie. She's a resident of Salt Lake City, or former resident of Salt Lake City. And she really gave us some really great advice. And then after that, visited two more times during Halloween. Um, it was an awesome time. Met some really great people. And then the third time, I'm down here and I'm moved. That's awesome. You see that downtown community <laughs> got need and Step Point Labs can move down. Exactly. <laughs> still living out of my car, as you can see with all the suitcases so and stuff. So that's why you brought your luggage here. <laughs> this guy is actually homeless, but he's still bootstrapping it. <laughs> yeah. I knew if I got down here, that's all that mattered. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, really awesome. So if anyone has a couch, or a bed, or a room, or, or a an floor. Airbnb, or a floor, or a hallway, I guess, <laughs> um, definitely hit us up because we're still looking for a place for Nee to stay so that he can blossom his, his business as well with his business partner too but that's like an excellent story and like we absolutely welcome you to the downtown tech community for and, sure uh, we're going to do all that all we can to support you and make sure that you can float. sleep on where would you recommend that <laughs> um the best place to find us is on online deadpointlabs.com or else you can just email me me at deadpointlabs.com nhi Excellent, and yeah. they, can, they can hopefully offer you a bed and also like a, you can offer them a spot in the, cl in the classes you're returning. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there's, there might be some trade-offs. There might be some trade-offs, yeah. all right, yeah. <laughs> Cool, well thank you. Now before we actually finish up with you, I need you to do me a favor. Sure. Now every episode, we're, well for the last three episodes anyway, <laughs> we've introduced our fortune cookie which tells the, the Vegas downtown tech fortune of the week. It's been quite popular, uh -huh. so we're going to be running it again. So I would like you to actually do me the honor of picking out the fortune. Sweet. I'd be honored. So I'll get you to pick this out. <laughs> there we go. All right, now can we get our official, very fancy, special fortune cookie handler to come out? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Cue some dramatic music, Spadoni. <laughs> okay, so we're going to revisit this, uh, this fortune a little later on after this segment. So the next person that I'm actually going to cross to is very well known in our community. We've had her on the show numerous times. We're very excited to welcome her back. This Thank is you. Chrissy Danger. Now, Chrissy Danger is like a complete rock star. She's done so many awesome things, especially for our downtown community. What we're going to do, Chrissy, is we're going to get you to um, try and beat a world record here. So I'm going to get Dylan to take it away. Oh, but yeah. You're in trouble now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to test this bop it skill. So if you want to come stand here in the middle. OK, so if we can get you, if we can get you to spin around until you're real dizzy. Yeah, just give it a, I don't know, maybe like a dance at a... Yeah, I think we're pretty good there. What do you think? Maybe should we give her 10 more spins? <laughs> 10 more spins! Where's up? You got a timer? Okay, three, two, one. All right, we're ready. Oh! 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 Oh!
always next week. It'll make revenge all the sweeter. Thank you. <laughs> all right, one more hand for Chrissy. <laughs> Okay, and the last person for our community segment tonight, you may actually recognize already. His name is Mike Howe. He is one of the original volunteers, as Dylan said, of the podcast. So you're a web developer by, by day, right? But you That's actually right. do a lot of things. So I didn't even know you were a web developer <laughs> until you told Most me people tonight. Know. I, yeah. My boss doesn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so if you're wondering kind of what Mike gets up to in his spare time, he does a lot of different things. Like, so he's kind of a jack of all trades, I would say, about now. Well, uh, master of none. Unless, <laughs> unless you count baiting. Whoa. Oh, really? Oh. Uh -oh. Hey, hello. <laughs> Okay, so um, another fact that you might not know as well is that Mike was actually responsible for creating our intro song that plays at the start and end of our podcast. That's right, yeah? Yes. Well, uh, that song was actually written for the uh, Downtown Project uh, Arts Contest back in 2012. And then we later on repurposed it for the theme song for the podcast. Yeah, it's very cool, and we're very thankful, and we haven't even changed it. We love no, it we so much, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you were doing rapping on that song, right? Yes, I was. Uh, can you give us a rendition of how the song goes? Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> really? You're what do you think, guys? That? Yeah, yeah. So thank you for creating that rap song. Oh, it's no awesome. problem. You know, um, when I made that, that was back in 2012, it's been like a year and a half, and uh, so much has changed downtown, and there's so many new businesses, so many new startups, like, you guys want to, like, a new one? A new version? Yeah. 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 yeah? All right. All right. You know, um, maybe, like, uh, you know, get some uh, Midlife Marauders on that track. You know, maybe some Sea Dog, Spadoni. Get yeah, some uh, local uh, some uh, Vegas artists, my boy uh, New Day and uh, Ulysses oh. from TNGMG, you know? I'm super excited about yes. this happening. Let's do it. All right. So just on top of everything else you're doing, which is obviously you don't do anything at all, <laughs> you have another project in the works that we're going to be previewing today, right? So why yeah. don't you tell me about that? So Because um, you're a filmmaker too I, right here. <laughs> I, uh, I dabble. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm doing this new project where uh, you know, I want to go behind the scenes and show you know, everyone uh, what, what you know, goes on like at different startups that, um, you know, or just in the general community. And I thought, you know, like, what better way to premiere uh, this weekly web series than to um, come to the podcast and film uh, a planning session? And because people don't realize how difficult it is to put one of these episodes on. So I wanted to just kind of capture that moment and show you guys uh -oh. uh, how <laughs> Dylan uh, got help to plan for this special Tony episode. We had some good ideas, I thought. <laughs> yeah? All right, guys, so you know that the next episode is our 50th episode, and we've worked really hard at this. We have Tony Shea coming on as a guest, so I asked you to do something really, really special. Um, if you guys could show me what ideas you've been thinking about that really could make this the best episode ever, I'd love to hear. So we've had all these ideas surrounding llamas. What if there's a celebrity llama? You know, one that's famous llama? in the llama community. That's a good one. <laughs> There's also, if you remember Monty Python's Holy Grail, Ralph the Wonder Llama, the Mexican Whooping Llama, you might be able to get some of these booked. What if we brought in a llama, we dressed up like in a suit and tie, you know, really cute, and we called it Barack Llama. <laughs> <laughs> what if we what contracted with, uh, with a local tattoo shop, and in, in honor of Tony, uh, offered like free core value tattoos to anybody who walks in that room. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> So I heard he has lots of cats. Is this true, like 10 of them or something? 15. 15, okay, yeah. So the day before he shoots, it's uh, answer your cat's questions day. It's really true. So maybe we get his cats, we bring them in, ask them questions, they ask us questions, 
and they give us like the inside scoop. <laughs> I mean, who else has that? Susan, can you talk to cats? I can. I know, like, R2-D2 you can talk to. For example, yeah. meow, 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 means what is it really like to have Tony as an owner? Mm -hmm. So you'd be a great interviewer <laughs> for the cats. Yeah. This is, see, I told you, I got the idea. Yeah, what do we know they're going to say something interesting? What if he has like a fan? It's like cats, Tony's cats, going to say interesting things. I mean, come oh, on, yeah. you know. You know how Tony lives this like super glamorous <laughs> lifestyle? I was thinking as like a joke, we'd give him like a Zappos t-shirt, right? Because he always wears like these like fancy t-shirts, you know? No, he already, he already does that. Wasn't he, he on that? the... He was just on the cover of uh, like Success Magazine or something. We could all sign that and give it to him. <laughs> okay, so we get a unicorn and then we put like Nike shoes on the unicorn because like zap boats, right? Get it? Get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we put it on the table because remember we had the penguins there, right? And then they were like super popular. But this time we make sure that the unicorn doesn't poo on the table because the penguins pooed on the table. But it's going to be fine. It's going to be right. And then Tony Shea can sit on top of the unicorn <laughs> and then he can just be like looking down on you like, like, like he's the king of like shoes and everything. You know? That's Rainbow it's and rainbow, cupcakes. Rainbow, sure. I would really, I think that'd be cool. We could give the what cupcakes that the rainbow unicorn poos out to the audience. Mm, they could win a prize. Yes, you can win like a cupcake the that the unicorn poos but out. But even if it tastes like a cupcake, it came out of it. Anus. And we do that and we give him shots of Fernet, right? Because he likes Fernet. I know that. Because yeah. I've had shots of Fernet. So that's. That probably could have played out better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would just break. Next week we can try to re. Convene. Those are some of the worst ideas I've ever heard. The cat, no, the cat was good. Thank Who you. Good? Thank you. Whoever started the cat thing kind of ruined good. it for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm That's out. Truth. I'm leaving. That's the truth. Yeah, you know what? Meow. Yeah, 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 I don't. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Meow. Yeah. 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 I do know that. Yeah. I know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Are we? Are we getting more beer? <laughs> We're out of here. Not till next week. We're out of here. <laughs> I feel like you ruined our secret of, you know, the amount of effort and, and <laughs> amazing ideas that never make it into the show. I, I think some of those ideas should make it into the show, honestly. Okay. Well, you so. never know. We haven't done this segment yet, so yeah. I think Tony's looking pretty <laughs> nervous right now. <laughs> he doesn't know what's in store yeah. for him, so. Cue <laughs> cool. the unicorn. So we have more of these episodes to look forward to, right? Yes. Um, I, I plan on making one, like, you know, every week. And you know, if, if you guys are you know downtown, like you want me to come through to your uh, startup or uh, you know anything, I can come with my camera and like we'll just shoot something like that. So um, how can people get in contact with you if they want? Um, that? If you know my name, then you have my number. It's uh, Erica. <laughs> it's Erica five six two Mike Cow. Oh, nice. I didn't actually know that either. I'm finding out so many things about you tonight. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. So um, yeah, thanks, Suze. <laughs> Um, hi, sir. Hi. What's your name? Greg. Hi, Greg. Where are you from? Austin. Awesome. Well, you get to start the fortune cookie game. So let me carefully give it to you on its special pillow. Oh. Um, now open it. But don't let anyone see the fortune. It's only for you and your eyes only. Okay. I know. Please. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Now give it back to me. And we're going to start the game of telephone. So you need to whisper it to uh, the person sitting next to you. Hello. And we're going to kind of um, oh, snake totally it around. So when it gets to the end, it'll go to you, and we'll take it all the way. But so we can keep track of it, we have this amazing flag. So you never know when it gets stopped. And um, you know, try to keep it true. But, um, and we'll see how it matches up at the end of the show. So, have fun. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Alexis. You're welcome. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Oh, that looks pretty good. <laughs> so they're making llamas out of dough. <laughs> The doughy llama. That's uh, right. Yeah. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Came to me, right. So put your hands together for Tony Shea. All right. So 
Downtown Las Vegas has changed a lot, but I wanted to kind of just walk through the last couple of years. This okay. is your this is your avatar. Anyway, so this is going to be your story. So we are going to start. Uh, let's start over here at the Ogden. We'll put you right in front of it. So I want to just kind of rewind time and talk about uh, when did you first discover the Ogden? When did you decide to move in? Uh, so let's see. Uh, I moved into the Ogden, which is where we are right now, right. about uh, two and a half years ago. And I think when I first moved in, it was uh, less than 20% occupied. But in the year or so prior to that, had been hanging out around downtown a lot, especially at Downtown Cocktail Room. Oh, uh, met actually. Michael Cornthwaite and, uh, and actually saw Emergency Arts and the Bee Coffee House before they even built anything out, uh, and then saw that come to fruition. So uh, I know it just felt right to move. Okay, through. so I, because I was thinking this was the start, but may, we'll make this the DCR. So this is, so the first thing was hanging out at the DCR and you kind of started to get to know that culture. That's what attracted you to downtown in the first place? Uh, yeah, no, it, I mean, it, it was actually Michael. It, we would hang out there uh, several times a week. And, and actually, this, we started hanging out there before there was any even any idea of Zappos moving to downtown. And uh, we'd actually been looking for the past seven or eight years to build a permanent, pl permanent campus somewhere. Michael's uh, very persistent, very passionate, very convincing. And uh, the more he talked to us, the more he convinced us that maybe we should take a different approach than other kind of typical corporate campuses. And, and over time, we actually decided, well, actually, I, th I think he's right. Maybe we should actually turn the entire concept inside out. Because those other campuses, you know, Apple, Nike, Google, were great for employees, but didn't really right. integrate or contribute to the community around them. And we started shifting our thinking to, what if we built a campus that was more analogous to NYU, where the campus kind of blends in with the community, and you don't really know where one begins or the other ends, and where Zappos employees would actually be encouraged to go out into the community, and we would encourage community folks to come into the campus and, and really have uh, I guess that's kind of where the whole idea of uh, collisions started happening. How gotcha. do we get more collisions between? Uh, in, initially, it was just driven by uh, the need of a Zappos campus, and this was all before the whole idea of downtown project even started. So, um, what about uh, Ed Glazer's book, Triumph of the City? So, you talk about that a lot in some of your presentations and how that influenced you, and especially the statistic that I've heard you cite a couple times about how dense populations in cities are more productive, and then in work environments, sometimes they're less. Was the, was that kind of thought also swirling around in your head at these late night DCR shindigs? Uh, not initially, but then as the idea of possibly moving downtown, and I didn't even know the former city hall was be going to become available. But once we found oh, that, was it, it still was it still city hall at that point? It was, yeah. Oh, okay, and, so and, still and and I don't watch TV, so I didn't even know the city was building a new city hall. Yeah. And uh, But as we discovered that it was actually a real possibility, started reading more books, including Triumph of the City. Uh, and it turns out the author is a Harvard economics professor that uh, it's, it's actually a really interesting book. Uh, would recommend even for people that aren't involved in urban revi revitalization, because he studied cities from all different time periods, like Rome, New York, Detroit, and looked at why some thrived and some didn't. And actually, a lot of the findings that he cites in the book are uh, really counterintuitive, and, and including the statistic that uh, every time the size of a city doubles, innovation and productivity per resident increases by 15%. And so that actually uh, started making the business case from the Zappos perspective for why we gotcha. should move downtown. Uh, in addition to all the other community stuff that we were thinking about. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move your avatar over here to the Emergency Arts Building, if you don't mind just me grabbing your head like that. Um, now, here we are at the <laughs> Emergency Arts. Now, I wanted to maybe talk now about the user lib. So I wasn't, uh, I've never quite understood the whole story of where it came from. And if you could just kind of explain how it came into fruition. And for everybody, the user lib is a place that's right up, right on the same block. And it's originally, it was kind of like work in progress. It was a co-working space. It seems to also be a kind of a creative space and all in one kind of library thing. Yeah, and so that was something that was originally Pavel's idea. Where's Pavel? That was Pavel's Pavel? idea? You didn't know this? The whole time we were setting this up, you didn't say anything to me? <laughs> what? Jeez. You know, he spent he, he spent like his entire week printing out all these 3D things at this tin shop. And I, yeah. yeah, no, that's actually Pavel right there. Yeah. So, um, 
No, uh, no, no, I have other characters we can use, so we have Pavel now here, too. Okay. So, so this was actually right before Downtown Project was officially formed, and so Pavel emailed me uh, and had this idea for a tech library, and, uh, and initially there were no funds for anything, and, uh, and, and so to build the initial tech library, uh, Zappos was actually the one that funded the initial, uh, basically it was Zappos' contribution to uh, this idea of a community uh, tech library that got the oh, initial okay. uh, whole thing whole thing going. So did it ever feel like an experiment in your head? Like, could it have played out in different ways where you might have lost interest in downtown early on? I mean, for me yeah. personally, I had already been hanging out there for about a year or so, and, and the thought actually never even crossed my mind from the Zappos perspective to, okay. to, to do that there. But then on the Zappos end, it's complicated because we're now actually wholly owned by Amazon, and so we can't actually go around uh, doing anything that's not directly related to online retailing. And so oh. that's actually, because of that constraint, that's actually what uh, uh, oh. kind of, that's how Downtown Project was born, was really to do the things that were just really difficult under the Zappos umbrella. To oh, do. that's interesting. So without the Amazon acquisition, there wouldn't, like, this probably just would still be a big Zappos project? You don't think it would have been privately funded? Uh, I think it's really hard to say because it was Amazon acquiring Zappos that provided the liquidity for okay, a downtown right. project to, to do stuff, so it's, so it's a little bit chicken in the egg yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll leave Pavel over here to steal some more shelving. Let's move you over to <laughs> work in progress here. So tell me a little bit about how this came to fruition and um, the story behind it. Uh, so there's a guy named Zach Ware who worked at Zappos uh, at the time, and he was actually in charge of our website. And when we decided we were going to move into the former city hall, uh, just in our conversations, it became clear that he really understood a lot of the concepts that we cared about, including uh, it's less about how pretty the building is or uh, you, you know, how uh, great the inside finishes were, and it's really more about how do we get employees to collide, how do you get employees to uh, go out into the community, how do, how do we essentially increase the number of collisions. And we actually talked to a lot of different people, a lot of different architects, and uh, I think that's a really hard concept for most uh, people to wrap their minds around when they're, for, for people that come from a kind of a traditional architecture background. Uh, and so for whatever reason, uh, Zach and I really connected and he got that, so we actually took him off of what I would say is probably Zappos's most important priority, the website, and had him focus on really helping build out the campus because campus this was such an yeah. important part and we wanted to make sure uh, we did it right. After that was done, uh, he had separately launched Work in Progress uh, and, and now is CEO of Project 100 uh, and so is actually no longer a Zappos employee but focus on the, these parts. But, it, but it's all centers around uh, building community and building collisions. You think you'd be very that is Zach Zach where? Where? Uh, Campus development, Project 100. <laughs> get, his, get his coffee cup in there. Yes. yes. I know it doesn't even look like a Lego head, but <coughs> came in the package. Okay, so let's move you um, next over to, let's see, let me think through my head. Was Learning Village or Gold Spike next? I guess it's probably Gold Spike, right? I think so. Okay, so we'll move you over here to the Gold Spike now. Uh, yeah, so Gold Spike used to be this uh, old smoky casino and we acquired downtown project acquired in may and um and then we basically took out all the gaming and replaced it with real life games and so we had um over oversized uh jenga and oversized <laughs> cornhole and uh oversized connect four and so on and and basically it our you goal feel tiny. uh it doesn't make me feel tiny, yeah. but, um, sure, you're, you're but if it makes point. you feel tiny, that's <laughs> fine. Sure, okay, okay, um, all right. Jeez, so, can't no, catch a break with No, that's thing. cool. And so um, we just wanted it to be fun. We didn't uh, think it would make you feel tiny. So, um, and, 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 But it was one of those things where our goal was to, and, and I remember the headlines when we announced that we were taking out the gaming. Uh, uh, there were a lot of media headlines that, that were like, oh, that'll never work, and so on. And, and we had actually no proof or, uh, you know, in tech terms, MVP that, that it would work, but it was more just something that just felt right. Oh, right. And it was one of those things where it wasn't like there was one uh, 
designer or architect that figured everything out. The really cool thing about it was just different people threw in different ideas and we're like, all right, let's try, see what giant beer pong looks like. Or, right. <laughs> or now there's a skating rink outside or, and, and, and so on. And so, uh, and it's been kind of cool. And, and that, it's, I think one of the most unexpected things from that uh, compared to what we originally thought would happen was by day, daytime, it's kind of like this really cool casual co-working space. Yeah, it and, is. And I've gone in there where there's just laptops lined around all the bar area. And, and, and then by night, it, and then it kind of transitions into this hangout happy hour lounge. And then like today's uh, Thursday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, there's live bands outside. And, and, uh, and now there's actually people living in the former hotel rooms that got renovated. And all of those things just kind of evolved very uh, organically and naturally. And, and that's part of the reason why I, I really like it. Like, it just too, feels yeah. comfortable to hang out. Yeah, I would say, in my opinion, this is, out of all the properties, I think this is the, my very favorite one. And, and then we did things that, at the time, were super controversial and had to fight for, like, uh, on the corner of, because um, the main entrance is actually on Ogden between uh, 3rd and 4th, right? And, and, oh, okay. and yeah. which is actually not the normal main door. Like, there's a big corner door on, I think it's 4th Street, uh, which we actually made the decision to shut down. And the reason we did that was this whole idea of getting collisions. And, and now it seems no one even gives a second thought to that. <laughs> but, but there were actually a lot of uh, uh, people that felt very strongly about, oh, we should have as many doors as possible. Uh, but part of the cool thing is it also enables this. Uh, one of our goals with downtown projects is to have this ongoing sense of discovery. So we know there's stories of people that go into Gold Spike for the first time. They kind of stumble into it. Uh, and maybe they go by day and they think that's all it is and then a separate time they go right. at night and then they don't even realize there's a backyard and then oh, when yeah. they go to the backyard maybe two or three times later and so every time there's something uh, there's a black light room yeah. that, that's evolved yeah, that's and, and so uh, one of the things I really like about Gold Spike is it really plays into this ongoing sense of uh, discovery for most people. Yeah, sorry to make you so tired, but you got to walk all the way down Fremont over here, the Learning Village. So, uh, so I'm actually uh, I attend the um, board meetings for Meetup.com, mm -hmm. and then also Vegas Tech Fund is a shareholder in Skillshare. And in talking to both of those companies, ask them what their biggest challenges were because. They're focused on building gathering points, meeting spots, uh, learning locations for uh, cities all around the world and neighborhoods all around the world. And they said their biggest uh, challenge was actually the venue challenge. And there's so many communities around the world where uh, there's people that are passionate about something but just didn't have a good venue to meet at. And, and so we actually don't own the land to Learning Village. And so uh, it's built out of the trailers because we just wanted to throw up something quick. Uh, you know, and, and this was before Container Park and uh, a lot of other places were, were open where people could meet. And we've had different speaker series and, and so on. And so uh, it's a semi-temporary, semi-permanent um, project. But because we don't own the land, uh, you know, chances are those trailers are going to move at, at some point. But, oh, that's but it was a way yeah, to realize. kind of jump start things and help accelerate things. Yeah, because I mean, I, when we first came, the, the UNLV president was basically giving talks at the user lib, which just you yeah. can't fit the amount of people. Well, and the, well at the very beginning, thing, he was actually yeah. out of my apartment oh. upstairs, <laughs> and like literally the size of, of, of this room. And, uh, and then we outgrew that and then you know, tried some other locations and outgrew that. And it's cool because we've had like all sorts of great speakers, like the co-CEO of Whole Foods come oh, and yeah. speak, or Morgan Spurlock, and, and so on. And, and they've been speaking at the Morgan, at, at the at, sorry, at the Learning Village, and uh, you know now some of those events, it's several hundred people, and it also gets and simulcast into the other uh, trailers there when we run out of room. Yeah, I will say the the speaker series is. Absolutely, my favorite reason for living downtown. Okay, so I'm going to take you, I guess, over to Zappos. Yeah, so we're completely moved in now. Uh, it took us a, a period of a couple months to move in. Uh, we actually had the grand opening uh, ribbon cutting there where we actually set a new world record. I don't know if you. Yeah, it was didn't that. Okay. I mean, we actually had a ribbon that was over a mile long. And then over 1,500 pairs of scissors, or and 1,500 people there simultaneously cutting the ribbon. So the record was for the most number of people simultaneously yeah, cutting the ribbon. That was quite the scene. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. someone decided it would be a good idea to have a happy hour with 1,500 <laughs> pairs of scissors running around. But um, it worked out. 
and, yeah, so um, it, the, the walls still aren't, because we moved from Henderson where we've been for seven or eight years, and so uh, we have all sorts of decorations there, so it's still a work in progress in getting our new headquarters uh, up to the Zappos feel. Yeah, yeah, I went to the door recently. It seems like you're getting there pretty quick, though. It's had a lot of personality already, I thought. Um, okay, so this is this is for Life is Beautiful. Uh, that was just one of those things where uh, someone, a, a guy named Rehan, uh, founder of Life is Beautiful, had this absolutely crazy idea. His idea was to fence off 15 blocks. Uh, Which one do you like for Rehan? Both pretty off. That one. <laughs> okay, that's uh, be Rehan. Okay. Yeah, so, so his idea was to actually uh, do four festivals in one. A uh, music festival, we had 65 bands, including The Killers, Imagine Dragons, Beck, and, and so on. Um, we had, uh, and then it was its own culinary festival with 50 celebrity chefs. Uh, it was its own uh, learning festival, and it was its own uh, arts festival, where I, I think something like 16 murals went up, and most of those are still remaining, so yeah. that's kind of cool that they remained after the festival. And, and then, on top of that, he, he uh, decided to fence off 15 city blocks, which has never been done before in any city. So it's almost like South by Southwest meets Coachella. And we ended up having 60,000 people yeah, attend amazing. over two days. Uh, and uh, I've been to a lot of festivals, and, and it, it was definitely one of the top festivals I've ever yeah, been Yeah, it was to. uniquely downtown, too. I liked it. <laughs> hey, anybody go to Life is Beautiful? Yeah. 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 Okay, so the last stop on this tour is uh, the Container Park. So give me the rundown of where that idea came from and how it came into fruition. Uh, it's one of those things that just kind of, uh, like, kind of like the Gold Spike, where it was just different people throwing in different ideas. And now there's 40-something um, small businesses, all local there. In some ways, it's kind of like a small business incubator where they can test out ideas, and if they do well, then maybe get a bigger, more permanent location somewhere. Uh, and one of the th one of our goals uh, with that was, you know, prior to that, you didn't really see a lot of kids or family around downtown. Right. There's a giant treehouse and slide in there, and uh, it's just a really <laughs> cool vibe. We had to do a lot of things that were that had never been done done before in the city, like figuring out how to stack containers and these modular cube structures. And one of our biggest challenges was if, it's, if there's alcohol involved, then it's an adult thing. And if there's slides involved, then it's a kids only thing. And um, <laughs> we- You're like, alcohol and slides. Well, yeah. we, wanted, we wanted something where the adult, actually it's been interesting because uh, a, lot, a lot of adults have actually gone down this slide. That's 40 uh, feet up there. And uh, I think half of them scream. Um, one of them may have been you, and so... Uh, I just felt so tiny. Yes. I felt so tiny in yes. that thing. Yeah. But, but the whole vibe we were looking to create was the idea of, like, Im imagine a backyard barbecue pool party where kids are having fun, but adults are also enjoying a beer or oh, two yeah, yeah. and hanging out with the adults' friends, knowing that their kids are safe. And so that was the vibe that we were trying to create for, uh, for Container Park. And, and so it's been pretty cool just seeing uh, families show up and, and kids show up, but also adults show up and not feel like, oh, this is a kids only place or, or vice versa. We, well, I wanted to talk about the, the possible scenario of some kind of a monster coming out of Lake Mead. Really just how cool that movie would be if it was destroying the city. If this comes up, does the downtown project have any ability to stop him? Or is there anything we could do before he eats up all of the important things? I don't know. All, all I can say is that that monster makes <laughs> you look really tiny. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, luckily, you're on the podcast crew here. We've devised okay. a plan to save this city. Yeah, that is a good, a good guy So it's all good. Don't worry about it. Bring up the llamas for judging. All right, and remember the one. All right, now we got Lise.
I'm a llama, not a dinosaur. <laughs> So make sure this is an important decision because one of them will win a free beer. <laughs> um, so I'll take it easy. I'm gonna have to go with. Well, the first one actually looks like a white donkey and made <laughs> and made a white donkey noise. So I'm gonna have to go with the second one. Oh. Uh, this is the person that paid for the beer tonight, so thank you, RJ. We appreciate the beer. Yes. Okay, so so you're with you're with the International Eatery, which is just opened up on New Year's right down the street. Game, you were not, not only did you buy beer for everybody tonight, you also brought everybody pizza in the back. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, much appreciated. Thank you for having me. So, what do you have uh, for us here? Well, um, well um, I'm a new kid in town. <laughs> well, um, kind of, uh, we've been watching uh, a lot of great potential in the downtowns, and that's why we brought this international eatery. So, we, uh, we came up with the idea. You know, uh, we brought probably about four different kind of concept restaurants. You can have uh, street tacos, you can have uh, Chinese, it's Hong Kong style, by the way. So, uh, we, uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, it's a good ramen, right? Perfect. So, uh, th well, actually, it's import, Japanese chef, by the way. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, uh, we, we brought also uh, uh, Italian, so pizza kind of stuff. It's, uh, basically, the reason why we brought this is because um, we try to, uh, back to our community, uh, provide a good a quality of food and affordable uh, for locals, for tourists. And also for Zappos, employee. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Okay, and then, yeah, we, we try we try to our best to serve to everybody, yeah. right? Good. That's it. So what do you what do you got here? You gonna do something? Oh, for me, huh? Okay, gotcha. Then how to make? It. I want to give you. Yeah, come stay. We'll make. You want it. another llama yeah, yeah. or what's the deal? No, I want you to make a dough. Try. Like a pizza? Yeah, pizza, pizza dough. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome, like awesome. It. That's Baby great, that's great. Up, yeah. uh, tomorrow at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Slave driver. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, RJ. Appreciate it. Featured you more than a few times on the closing segment, so you got lucky again. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You're very lively, so we're happy to have you. Now, I hear that you were the last person to hear the fortune. In fact, you have a peanut flag to prove it. And uh, he's been covering everyone in the front row with flour, by the way, including myself. So, yeah, he's doing really well. So, without further ado, can you tell everybody what the fortune of the week for downtown Vegas is? Well, first, I just want to say I don't, I'm English and I don't speak American. So, what I heard may not be the truth. <laughs> what I heard was don't get a hermit headache. <laughs> it's very important to make sure that not you don't get a hermit headache, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I thought so too. So what would be the English interpretation of that? Um, uh, keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now for those who were interested in hearing what the fortune started out to be, I actually have it here. So it was instead of don't get a hermit headache or whatever I think I've almost telephoned it again on yeah. top of that it was a merry heart does good like a medicine well, it's <laughs> almost the same same general I mean, moral it, it's exactly the same you can just make it the same yeah. meeting yeah. Yeah. same message you know it kind of does so like I think what they're saying is if you're a hermit it's going to make you sad yeah. Yeah. but a merry heart does good like a medicine yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it that way yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> Downtown Project. Downtown Project.
Tag. 